The Nintendo Switch has so many different kinds of controllers. You got Joy-Cons, you got Pro Controllers, you got the weird ones that you can find on Alibaba. And right here we got something that's kind of a mix of all three. Right here we got the Nixie wireless controller for NS. I wonder what that's for. But right here is what I was talking about in my holiday gift guide. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's gonna be a link to it up there in the description box below and in the top end comment. But basically this is that Split Pad Pro Pro that I was talking about. If you don't know what the Split Pad Pro is, I got them right here. They're basically a pro controller that met an unfortunate fate with a buzzsaw. I have the Damon X Machina versions and I'm so happy I do. I'm never getting rid of these things. They just look so cool and like, not many people have this anymore. I don't think they even sell this version. And it's like a limited edition. Even if I don't care for a brand, I want something that's limited edition because I am just a horrible person. So yeah, let's get rid of these and move over to this bad boy right here. But real quick, dudes and dudettes, before we look at the Nixie Joy Pads, be sure to click that like and subscribe button. And let me know down in the comment section below, have you used these Switch controllers before? What are your thoughts on them? Let me know down below. And if you just got a Switch for Christmas, awesome. I am so happy for you. And if you're wondering what are the accessories you should get, well, you're in luck because that is going to be next week's video. The best accessories to get for your Switch in 2022. And if you want to see that, be sure to hit that notification bell so that way you know when it's posted. And I have been live streaming a lot more on this channel. I've been live streaming Dying Light and having a ton of fun doing it. So you definitely want that notification bell for when I live stream. Anyway, dudes and dudettes, back to the video. So I'm really excited to check this out. So yeah, as you can tell in the mail, it got really damaged. But I think it should still work. So you get the two joypad, one frame, which I believe this right here is the frame. You just get a USB charging cable and a user manual, which we will never look at. It says after receiving the product, we're gonna have to charge it for around two hours. So that is what we'll do. So let's open this up. I don't think yours should come as damaged as mine because it was Christmas. Oh, that was a little difficult. Oh, this feels nice. I like the way this feels a lot. It's got like a, like a matte finish. Ooh. That's like, can you hear that? <laughs> that sounds great. And here is the USB cable. That is gonna be USB-C. Wow, they really, I'm impressed. A lot of people are moving to USB-C now and that's awesome. Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, they're all USB-C. I think that's the first time where they've all been like the same thing, so that's cool. And right here, we got the Nixie Joypad. So let's take this out of the box. It's, and that is really comfortable. I like that a lot. Oh, wow. And you also have like these two back paddles that you can program. So if you're a hardcore gamer, I'm not hardcore enough. I never use these. I n I've never used the back paddles. I don't care to. So I'm trying to look at the, what the, what? You gotta charge both of them at the same time. They have the two USB ports right there and they only give you what, one? Uh, let me find another one really quick. All right, so I got them charging right now. I did set the two hour timer, so I'm just gonna watch Don't Look Up on Netflix right now, and I will be back. Two hours later. Okay, so I just finished Don't Look Up, and oh my God, it is so good. You've got to watch it. But moving over to the Nixie Joy Pads, they connect just fine to the Switch. There's no real problems going on. And overall, everything seems to be going good, or so I thought. What kept me from using the Split Pad Pro much was that it didn't have any gyro, rumble, or wireless functionality. And that's where these Nixie Joypads come to play. So my first impressions with the Nixie Joypads are really strange. It's unlike any Joy-Con or any controller I've ever owned. The first thing that I noticed was how comfortable this grip was. It felt sleek, ergonomic, and honestly a big step up above that Split Pad Pro that I've adored for the last two years. Getting a controller from a third party company is always kind of a risk. Yeah, you can save some coin, but more more often than not, it's better to just pay that extra money and get an official controller. And not only are these controllers from a third party, they're from a third party we don't really know. They're not Hori, they're not PDP, they're not Power A. And the Nixie Joypads cost as much as a normal Switch Pro controller from Nintendo. So it makes you wonder if this is really worth the price or if it's a way for them to just scam some cash from an unsuspecting customer. Now, sir, what made you swindle these unassuming gamers with a cheap product? I like money. That's what most of these unknown third-party companies offer. It also doesn't help that my box came in pretty bent out of shape. This had me extremely worried that my joypad units wouldn't work right. 
So the box did say to charge them for two hours before use, and they give you a USB-C cable to connect them to the bottom of the controllers. You don't need to do it this way. You could just connect and charge them to the Switch like a real Joy-Con, but I just ended up doing this anyway for my own sake. After those two hours though, you're good to go. I wouldn't recommend using them for the two hours that it's charging. Just let the battery do its thing. Connecting them to the Switch is really easy. You could use the pairing button on the side rail like a Neanderthal, or you could use big brain moves and just attach them like normal Joy-Cons. Really? I've got a mind of the true scholarship. Oh, it's so simple. After that, you're good to use them. I thought I'd be smooth sailing with those first few hours because of how easy they connected. Oof, let me tell you, I went down a bit of a slippery slope on this one. So I ran into a few weird problems the first day I had my Nixie joypads. The left stick would just drift in weird ways and the A button would sometimes be unresponsive. This was mainly while playing docked, but handheld and even undocked, I had no issue at all. I thought this was because I was playing online games like Warface, but when I switched over to an offline game, I had the same issues. I played Super Mario Odyssey, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Smash Bros Ultimate on my first test with the controllers. I'm not really used to playing these games and I thought the weird inputs I was experiencing were because I didn't know well enough how to control them. Other than Mario Kart 8, whoever wants the smoke is gonna get the smoke. So I moved to a game that I was more familiar with, like Immortals Phoenix Rising, and I even tried Sonic Colors. And boy, were my worries intensified. The controller just didn't register some of those inputs, and all I could think to myself was, this company really charges $70 for this? I set it down, upset and frustrated, and I tried it out again a few hours later in handheld. And the inputs just started registering? After two minutes, I didn't even realize it was a third-party controller. If you had told me it was a Joy-Con Pro dev kit, I'd believe you. Finally, the controller was running well. I decided to take a look at the instruction manual to see if there was something that I personally did that would have somehow gotten rid of like the drift or the miss input in the buttons. Turns out when you first wake up the console, you can't touch the thumbsticks for the first five seconds. And that that's so weird. That's so weird. Having such clear and inexcusable problems when I first started to use the controllers, it put me on edge a bit and made me start noticing issues a lot easier. So if there was something wrong of any kind during my playtime, I'd assume it's the Nixie joypads. I'm happy to report though that these controllers work so well. There's no drift, there's no input lag, and this doesn't feel like a cheap third-party product. And I'll be honest, this might be my main go-to Switch controller. They're way more comfy than the Nintendo Joy-Cons, and they have all the features that are missing in the Split Pad Pro. So really with these Nixie Joy-Cons, Pads, you're getting the functionality of a Joy-Con and the comfort of a Split Pad Pro. You aren't getting HD rumble here, but having it here regardless is nice overall, and that HD rumble isn't really entirely noticeable. No one's ever gonna say, Ugh, this is just rumble. Or, now that's that HD rumble. What kept me from using the Split Pad Pro much was that it didn't have gyro, any rumble, or that wireless functionality, like I said. And what kept me from using the Joy Cons was that they weren't as comfortable, and my new Satisfy Zen grip hasn't come in yet, and my old one doesn't fit my new Switch OLED. And that's where the Nixie Joypads come into play. They give you a little frame so that way you can play like it's a normal controller and it's great and they added a nice texture on it and i love that they added this here zombie land rule number 32 gotta enjoy the little things they also have these LED rings around the thumbsticks, and I don't really use it much, if at all. I know you could program them, but I'll be honest, I was fine with just the red and green. Mainly because it's my favorite lightsaber colors. Isn't this so cool? It's so cool. Thanks, babe. <laughs> So I've had my Nixie joypads for about a week or so, and I gotta say, I am really impressed. So I originally found these about a year ago. They were listed as Beanbuck Joy-Cons, but they had the same issues that I had where the left stick would drift and there were some misinputs in the controller. Mine only lasted like a day, maybe two at most, but I know other creators had theirs last like a week. Some of them even found like workarounds behind it. So like these are the new updated models, so they shouldn't have any real problems after that. And to truly test out these controllers, I played so many different kinds of games from varying genres. I think though I focused the most on shooters because I feel like on consoles, those definitely require the most accuracy. Whether I was playing handheld, docked, or tabletop, everything worked great. Even playing through the Oh God, over the Streamlabs OBS preview screen, I was still able to do really well. And I love when it's just sitting idle like this. It looks exactly like a Wii U gamepad. Easily like the most comfortable controller ever. And why do the Nixie Joypads look so much better with the Switch than the Split Pad Pro? Like, look at this. The Nixie Joypads look so much more flush than the Split Pad Pro. And real quick, before I forget, there's no IR sensor or NFC with these. So I'm sorry to disappoint all two people who need that feature. I gotta say, I love these Nixie Joypads far more than I could have ever expected. They're comfortable. They look great. 
great and they work amazing. I don't ever really see myself going back to the Satisfy Zen Grip or the Split Pad Pro after these. Even though that Zen Grip fits like a dream, my main problem is after I undock it, I gotta put it back in the grip and it just feels kind of clunky to do that. And I know it's not that big of a deal, but with these, I just take them out of the dock or I put them back in and I don't have to worry about it. I just keep playing. And these Nixie Joy Pads fit in just as well in the Satisfy case as well as the Zen Grip. Anyway, dudes and dudettes, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to click that like and subscribe button. And let me know down in the comment section below, what is your favorite way to play Switch? Tabletop, docked, or handheld? Let me know down below. I'll be honest, the way I play the Switch now, especially with the OLED, I'm playing handheld most of the time. It's just a lot easier, it's a lot more comfy, and I can like watch Disney+. Plus. And I have an affiliate link down below for the Nixie Joy Pads. If you want them, click the link down below. It helps me and supports the channel. And it gives you a discount as well. Anyway, dudes and dudettes, you're never too old or too cool for video games. Major Pineapple, out.